Good morning. Welcome to Zion. Are there any announcements? Other than uh, if you haven't signed up to get your pictures taken, uh, make sure you do that. Annual meeting next Sunday after church. So there'll be uh, some food provided, right? Chili and, I don't know, oyster stew, maybe. Okay, so blanket blanket Sunday next Sunday. Uh, there's envelopes in the pew. There's also a, a flyer there in the bulletin. So if you have questions about that, get with Ruby. Um, she's the expert on that. So uh, I might say that I'd mentioned last week about uh, that Willow Rogerson um, potentially getting a wheelchair. Uh, they were able to get that. Um, uh, if I get around to it, I'll send a picture to either Jeff or Brian so we can get that put up on the screen. But uh, she was uh, diagnosed finally with, uh, um, uh, now I don't remember, so I'm not going to say. But um, it, it's a, you know, she's going to have it for the rest of her life, probably in a wheelchair for the rest of her life. So um, cerebral palsy, that's what it was. I think Drew mentioned, I know the girls got beat last night. Um, you know, the girls come up a point short in their game. But the other night when I was at a, church or a school meeting, I was told that that team, I believe, is going to be the winningest, winningest team in Fairfield School history. Is that correct, I believe? So that's, yep. That's quite a feather in their cap for that. So, And Bailey got a lot of shout outs I noticed when we watched it last night on TV so <laughs> yeah I think uh, when when Bailey gets back we'll give her some some acknowledgement yeah but that is that is pretty cool that I mean there's I don't know of anybody else in this room maybe that's gone that far from uh, from a sports aspect so and she'll be back next year too so congratulations on that let's go to the Lord in prayer Lord, we thank you that we can be here this morning. We thank you for the sunshine that you've blessed us with. Uh, we also thank you for the, the knowledge that norm, warmer weather uh, will be coming this way. I would just ask, Lord, that you be with those um, that need your help, the, the Zook family, uh, the Rogerson family. Uh, we just lift them up to you. Um, be with us, guide us, direct us throughout this coming week that we may come back and return to worship you again all together next week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So if the praise team would come up. You may stand. Our first song this morning is Days of Elijah.
Open up the heavens.
Scripture reading this morning comes out of Matthew chapter 13, verses 1 through 9. That same day Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat in it, while all the people stood on the shore. Then he told them many things in parables, saying, A father, a farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path. And the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it didn't have much soil. It sprang up quickly, but because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and they withered because they had no root. Other seeds fell among the thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on a good soil, where it produced a crop, a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. Whoever has ears, let them hear. Join me in the Lord's Prayer, please. Our Father, You may be seated. And we welcome Pastor Jeff back. All your bright shining faces, come on up. I have a special surprise for you today. I brought back an epanada I got in the airport in the Dominican that we're going to share together. And I'm just kidding. <laughs> we're not going to do that at all. Because it was horrible, wasn't it? <laughs> um, it was the airport. If we would have got it on the street, it would have been horrible too. All right. Let me see what I got here. All right. So um, Tad read the, the word that we're going to talk about this morning. Jesus tells a parable tells a story about a farmer who went out to sow seeds. And it, the story really is about um, um, the, the seed taking root and growing. So if I were to grow some seeds in here, let's say, uh, let's say I just threw some seeds on the ground right here and I was uh, expecting them to grow, what do you think would happen if I just threw the seeds right here? Nothing. nothing. Why would nothing happen? Because you have to plant the seed in soil, water it, and have let it have plenty of sunlight. Okay. Um, but So they're not going to grow here. So what? let's say, uh, tell you what, what if I just put some seeds up here on the altar, God's altar? It'll grow up here on the altar, right? Why not? Because it needs sun, water, and soil to grow. Well, sun, water, and soil. You guys are like, you know, uh, really smart about this. Um, 
Let me see. What if I? What if I put the seeds in my pocket? Would they grow? Destroyed because of the washer dryer and once again. Okay, fair enough. Water. You need sunlight, water, and soil. Well, you guys are all on the sunlight, water, and soil thing. Do you guys? Do you know anything about soil? Like, what is soil? Dirt, okay. Um, what is, so we, we need dirt. Uh, can we just use any kind of dirt to plant in? Basically? Okay. What if I, there's dirt outside. What if I go out and throw the seeds in the snow uh, out here on the side of the church? Will they grow? They wouldn't because it's too cold out. They only grow in summer. Okay. So they need some warm weather. Is the ground, like, frozen? So will seeds grow in frozen ground? Ground. Okay. Rhett? Because they can't go in because it's too icy for them to go in the dirt. It is. It's, the ground is hard. Actually, that's one of the, the, the things. God says uh, in, in the parable, Jesus is the farmer. Because he'll tell the disciples, we're like, What's the, tell us about this story you told. He says, I'm the farmer, and the, uh, the seed is the word of God. And he says there's hard-packed soil, which would be the frozen soil out there. Nobody's, nobody's farming right now, right? You're not going out planting anything, right? Farmers don't plant anything right now. Just double-checking. Because the ground's too hard, right? How, what do you do? How do you fix hard ground? How do you make hard ground ready for the seed. Anybody know? How do you do it? Shelly? You gotta plow, you gotta plow it up, work the ground. Okay, you gotta plow it up, work the ground. Have you guys worked the ground? Have you? What, what do you do? So, I, it's hard to explain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I don't know that I would understand it, so that's good. All right, so there was hard ground, but then, ha, uh, how many of you have ever seen anybody farm? Okay, so there's a field, right, where stuff grows normally, and then there's parts of the field where nothing grows, right? Because, like, the tractor's always going that way, or people are always walking, and the ground gets hard-packed, right? In fact, isn't there a term for that? Is it hard pan, or am I making that up? A little bit? Okay. What? Compaction? It's a word we never use. <laughs> Uh, okay, well, and that's one. But there, there's areas where we don't really work the soil, and when you don't plant seeds, does, so I know this much about gardening, but if I didn't plant anything, would anything grow in the soil? What would grow? Weeds. Why do weeds grow in the soil? Okay. Do you know why weeds grow? Mm. Caroline knows. Caroline, why do weeds grow? Why do weeds grow, Gerald? There's weed seed everywhere. Weed seed? Where does that come from? The devil? <laughs> the devil, amen. All right, so I guess I always kind of thought, and I think probably ancient man thought that the weeds just grow naturally. This, but there are, they're weed, seed, weed seeds. Uh, and so weeds grow up. Can you grow weeds and good stuff in the same field? Uh, we'll take over and kill the uh, crops. Take up all the space and everything else. So are you telling me that the weeds will outgrow the good seed? If you don't do anything about the weeds? Does, what do you, when you guys garden, what do you do about weeds? Don't know? Has anybody ever pulled up a weed? Okay. You did? <laughs> Was it hard? Yeah. Have you ever pulled up weeds? Yeah. And sometimes they're sharp and they're... We were, we were climbing a fence to go up this hill to see this cistern. 
And I, I reached out to steady myself after I climbed the fence and I grabbed a cactus. <laughs> then I did the exact same thing, climbing up the other side, reached around and grabbed the cactus. Um, but yeah, cactuses are like weeds, right? They're, they're sharp and they're like nettles. Have you ever been in nettles? Yeah, it's horrible, isn't it? Burns and itches. Do you, does anybody get poison ivy? Poison ivy? Anybody out here get poison ivy? Anybody poison oak? Poison everything? Okay. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> All right. So we know uh, Jesus talked about hard pack or compacted soil. And we talked about weeds. And um, the other one he said was like rocky path. Uh, where do ro do, are there rocks in the field? Where do they come from other than the devil? Where, where are the rocks coming from? Anybody know? No. Gerald, where do the rocks come from? <laughs> They're under the ground and they work their way, way up. What do you mean they work their way up? Oh. I thought he was making it up. It's like, see these rocks like, I'm going to come up now. <laughs> What's tillage equipment? Plowing. Oh, okay, okay. Things that dig up the ground and all right, good. All right, so those three things are a problem. So this is the whole sermon right here. Who who is responsible for making that difficult soil good soil? The farmers. Say that again. The farmer. Who are the farmers? My dad and well, everybody that plants. You gonna be a farmer one day? So I'll probably talk, I'm going to let the other guys talk, but just know this, church. Jesus is the one planting the seeds. He is. And the seed is the word of God, and we're the soil. And you know, we need to be responsible for our own soil. And we can pull the weeds, and we can remove the stones, and we can do the things that we need to do to make that hard ground soft. And whose work is that? That's our work. Part of that is what we're doing right here today. Part of that is why I went to the DR, and we'll hear these guys talk about it. And you have the responsibility of helping make your heart good soil so that you can receive the Word of God. And if we do, what happens? If we have good soil, Rhett, what's going to happen? I don't really know. Okay. <laughs> if we have really good soil and we put good seed in it, what's going to happen? What will the seed do? What will the seed do? It will grow. It will grow. And that's a good thing. How many of you want to eat good produce and good fruit and good vegetables? Good fruit. Yeah, okay. <laughs> All right. I've got a special treat for you, so hang on.
I was getting ready to go to bed, and then the spider was right on the wall next to my bed. I didn't sleep very good the first night. Go to the picture, uh, the two pictures of me, and I'm, I'm doing this. Don't say anything. And uh, the guys that didn't go, somebody could tell me what that is. I will give you some strawberry wafers. Um, they're, they'll tell you what they were doing. That was the house that we worked on. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. That's a great picture, though. Uh... Keep going. I know it's got to be in there. There. Okay. On the right. Does anybody know what that what that is? On the left. Go. No, go back. Go back. Go back. Anybody know what that is? All right, when are you in the barn? When you have one away and you have one away. Ah, it is. We okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, okay. I'm eating these. All right, so... Uh, okay. How many of you play euchre? Okay. So my understanding, and I had to be corrected, I thought... And in, in, uh, two, apparently, um, Junior over here, Derek, he uses whatever scorecards he wants. <laughs> I like to use a six and a four, and the six you turn over first. And then when, I always thought when you turned over the four, you were in the barn. That meant, you, you know, you're in the barn. But apparently it's when you have one point left, you're in the barn, and then you have to milk the cow, which was, seemed wrong every time we did it. But anyways. Uh, am I on? Does it feel like it? I have a green light. Um, so what I'm going to do, I kind of shared with the kids what the Lord laid on my heart. And so why do I go to the Dominican? I go for a couple of reasons. The first reason is because it matters to Dean and it matters to this church. And Dean's been going forever. And, and there are others of you who've gone. I know Shelly, you've gone. Rita, you've gone. Matt, I think you've gone. You've gone. Really? Somebody said you went. Max. Like, Max. Max went. Okay. Uh, Maddie went. And, and part of what I'm doing, it's like Sunday school. I'm trying to help you understand. Sunday school is a good thing. It's important. We need to be a part of it. And supporting missions is something that's important. But not only supporting, it's going. And why do we go? I'll tell you why I go. I didn't go down to do ministry. And actually, I didn't want to go. I wanted to, I mean, I got plenty of other stuff to do. I didn't want to go. But, but because Derek and Bruce were going, I wanted to go along with them because I figured I'd be less likely to die. <laughs> um, but when I went, the, that was the verse, that, the the. the, the the scripture that was shared at the beginning of the week and it just dawned on me that when I go it's my opportunity to let God work on my soil because that's what needs to happen I'm just like you there are things in me that need to change I love what Gerald Hotstetler I don't know if you guys know Gerald it's a weird spelling it's like J-E-R-Y-L um, Gerald Hotstetler and uh he said every time he comes back, his wife always says, you're a better man when you come back from being on the mission field. I don't know if that's true yet because it's still early for me. But um, I went and I didn't, I didn't do any preaching. I didn't do any, I did ministry, but I didn't do what I would do. I had to do what other people do, like work project, that kind of thing. But God was working on my heart. And, and it just reminded me how important that is that we... We allow things to happen in our lives where God can work on our heart. And he's doing that right now, right here. That's one of the reasons we're here. That's why we do ministry. But sometimes we have to do other things, you know, depending on the type of soil we have. Whether it's hard pack, compaction, right? And, uh, which is weird. And that's just because the seed won't get in, right? It just like bounces off the ground. It just, 
Will a, will, a, will a seed grow if it's not in the ground? Sometimes? Okay. What? And it, it won't last, will it? And Jesus, he talks about that. And thorns which, which choke, it chokes the word out. So we could be like, I love the word of God, but then I also love cheese. That has nothing to do with that. But, but so there's this battle between the two things I love. Does that make sense? I want to do this, but I want to do that. I want to have both. And, and going on the mission field, sometimes things happen. Sometimes we set things aside or we let things go or we don't do things. And, and then we come back. And I came back yesterday and I was exhausted. I'd like to tell you guys that I went to sleep probably at 8.30 and I was gone. Oh, and the bed felt so good. And I, didn't, I don't think I woke up till like we did get up early. It was like 5.30, 5 o'clock this morning. Because isn't that about what time we got up there? You know? It's crazy. And then, of course, the stones. And, and, and here's all I want you to know. We pull the weeds. We remove the stones. We allow the things in our lives that break the ground. And those are things that we must do. And just going on a mission trip is one way that that can happen. I, we did a lot of great, fun building things. But I'm a better man for it. I had the privilege of working shoulder to shoulder with these guys and the other guys that were down there. And uh, they'll tell you about the trip. But I know for me, I needed it. I needed it. I need sometimes to have those things happen. Because even in ministry, I get wrapped up maybe in not letting God do this, this internal work in me. And the truth is, if that doesn't happen, what kind of pastor am I really going to be? What kind of believer am I really going to be? It'll be mediocre. So I'm going to let, uh, uh, we'll start with Derek. Derek, why don't you come up and share a little bit about your trip? You don't have any pictures up there that are going to be. No. <laughs> <laughs> no pictures. <laughs> I, actually, I do have pictures, but I'm not going to share them. Uh, Jake. Oh, okay. It's okay. Um, so it's kind of wild that. That scripture came up, and then we're uh, this Sunday. That scripture's up there again. But on our um, morning devotions, I think what was it, the second day that scripture came up about uh, the soil. And one of the, the biggest reasons I wanted to do, to go was literally that. I didn't realize it was like that scripture, I guess. But uh, life becomes really easy, I think, for me and my family. Um, boys, would you agree? Life is pretty. Easy pretty cushion and <clears throat> I don't know um it wasn't always like that I guess but sometimes I just feel that uh there's more out there I guess for us um and this is what I'm doing right now is not something I do <laughs> I don't stand in front of people <laughs> um but I just felt led to go down to the DR and um the chaos it like the town is so chaotic for us I could have just sat there and ate ice cream days on end and watch the people. <laughs> the ice cream is a big part, okay? <laughs> but um, <clears throat> it's so chaotic, but it's, they're all so happy. They're all so um, content, I guess. And then we go back to the mission house, Goshen house, and um, that same, the staff there is the same thing. It's so, they're just okay with everything you know around here we don't if we're working we don't have the tools I go buy it or I'll call somebody hey I need to use it there we figure out how to make it happen regardless of whether we have it or not and I guess my point is is in our lives um, for me it's time to slow down I think a little bit and actually know the people and know what you're doing from day to day instead of well, it's so fast it's so fast you know uh, Ethan's almost 17 years old it just went so quick so fast and I think we need to slow down a little bit and understand what we're doing and start knowing the people around us a little bit more and what they're actually, who they are. So, do it and be happy. <laughs> That's all I have. <laughs> And eat ice cream, for sure. Add on to that. <laughs> All right, I have a few pictures to share and kind of, I kind of set them up to walk through and just talk about the trip in that order. 
I screenshotted. that picture to kind of show you where we were at on the Dominican Republic. So that we're obviously about halfway down. Um, Haiti's on that side. I've been to Haiti a few times, second time to DR, and it still blows me away, the vegetation difference. Um, if you have a chance, like, I don't know if you can do it, but on Google, if you can do a live, like, pull it up and just see the difference in the green on the DR side to the black on the Haiti side. DR, there's certain rules you can't cut down trees, things like that to keep it a little bit better. Um, so that kind of shows you where we're at. If you want to go to the next picture, this shows you how tough it is down there. <laughs> this was pretty much the weather we were there. Uh, yeah, the whole time we were there. Rained, I don't know, a few days, four days, five days maybe. But the rain would come in and then it would blow through, hour, hour and a half. Um, the picture that uh, Jeff shared of the rainbow was the most beautiful rainbow I think any of us have ever seen in our entire lives. It was we were working and all of a sudden somebody said something about a rainbow and we looked out and the house we were working on is way up on top of the mountain so the mission is kind of down the hill that way and then there's another mountain that goes up and you could actually see where the rainbow ended in the valley like it just it was, it was insane it's always seems like it's always out there and it just seemed so close so real so bright um yeah if you want to go to the next one this one's hard to see um there is a spider that's in that little crook that's easily as big as my palm. And I don't think I can look at that picture without hearing Jeff scream. <laughs> the, fr the first night, this was the next morning, but the first night we were there, Jeff's hand was about that far away from the wall and it like ran out and we all panicked. Derek went for his shoe to kill it and he was about this far from the wall and went to smack it and it jumped. And so we decided that it's just going to stay alive. We're just not going to. So there is a lot of critters around. If you want to go to the next one, the wasps don't mess around. They, he got me about just below the eye. And within, I don't know, an hour, I had difficulty seeing at all because it had swollen clear up. And this is at lunchtime. I had taken a Benadryl. But yeah, there's definitely some critters down there that can make life a little interesting. Go to the next one. Are there any electricians in here? This is pretty much, it's not every post, um, but most of the, electric, the electrical that goes to houses, this is what it looks like. In the US, if you go out and look on the outside of your gray box that goes into your house, there's normally a meter here because that meter, one, protects you from getting shocked, and two, they can then read how much electricity you're using. Here, neither of those are getting done. You could literally walk up and just tap your fingers right into there. This is kind of difficult to see, but that's, this is coming off of that box where there was no meter. They literally just wire nutted coming off the main feed just to feed another house. So, and then there's just an average pull. There's just <laughs> wires just going everywhere. <laughs> we, it just blew me and Derek's mind. We're walking around and you just look up. And you're like, how do, you, how do you fix anything? I have no idea. <laughs> so next picture here, and I'm, I'm going to mess that word up. Do you, uh, pinete? Pinete? So this is stone walls and they put about an inch layer of mud, masonry, mud, concrete mixture. And that is what the blue greenish stuff is. And they can get it to pretty much like drywall smooth. Um, so Derek and that's Gerald. That's the one that Jeff was talking about there on the right. Um, and you can go to the next one. This is, I believe, Bruce, the other Bruce that was down there, or Steve, as Jeff likes to call him, so we don't get mixed up. Um, this is, he's cutting wood on the outside of the house we're working at. And go to the next one. Dean liked to write his name everywhere, so you just ask him about that when he comes back. Jeff's on the other side, um, caulking the trim around. I uh, can go to the next one. There again, you can see Dean's name just everywhere. This is kind of this is at the end of day four, eight or nine, I believe. I walked through and took some pictures. Um, so some of the stuff in this house was already done, but that's Brett there leaning against the wall. You can see behind him there's a countertop coming out. None of that was there when we showed up. Um, so we built the countertop, put the edging around it. Uh, the tile was already done, stonework was done, but all the paint, painting that you see, um, Dean and Paula and Jeff painted pretty much quite a bit and got all that painted. This is looking up from the middle. The ceiling that you see there, Derek and me put the ceiling up. Um, we had a very sketchy scaffolding setup going on there to get us from here up there. 
um, two, if anybody's ever been on scaffolding, two sections got us up to where we could reach it, but then we didn't have any arm railings to keep us from falling off. And you couldn't put the next section of scaffolding up because it was going to hit the ceiling. So Dean rigged up something and made it work where we set it sideways and tied it with wire and yeah, we're all alive, so that's good. Um, the, there you can see that um, mud that they put up drying um, and you can pretty much they can paint over it and it'll look exactly like, like drywall here. Um, you can go to the next one. This is the upstairs. That section there is where it was looking up. It's a pretty small house. There's a bedroom on that side with a bathroom and then a bedroom on this side where I'm standing. I'm standing in the, in the stairway. Um, there's a light there. That's how they do all their lights pretty much. Um, the electric electricity was ran and the walls were put up, but they didn't know where the wires were going. So there was two guys that that's pretty much all they did all week was chase wires and figure out how to hook up switches and lights. And, um, and then me and Derek put the floor down as well. So it's all that tongue and groove stuff. Um, you can go to the next one. This is looking back the other direction, coming up the stairway there. Um, we pretty much did all the floors trim. The walls were already there, but uh, yeah, a lot of work got done there. You can kind of see the ceiling a little bit closer here, um, just tongue and groove and just screw it down. But it looks, uh, it's kind of reminds me of like, um, like a Gatlinburg log cabin, if you've ever been there, kind of all wood inside. This is the looking out over the, that opening there, the big window, it, most beautiful scenery down there that you could ever imagine. Um, it's just beautiful down there. Difficult picture to see because it's uh, got small, but we were day seven, day eight, something like that. Come back from ice cream, and the driving down there is ridiculous. They, they don't care. It, you, it's like Derek said it best, I think, like day five. He said it's a playground for adults, and it's really what it is because they don't care. There's a hill coming. There'll be a dude behind us, and he'll just honk and just pass on the curve and a hill and just makes it, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> and it's so close so many times that you almost think that accidents just never happen. They're just lucky. We were coming back day, yeah, whatever it was, out from eating ice cream. And the, a lot, they hire Dominicans to drive because of, if something like this does happen, it's a lot easier for a Dominican to deal with it than if an American was driving. They try to, they think they're gonna get a lot of money. And also the language barrier there is pretty difficult. The Dominican driver was driving, I heard the horn honking. So I kind of looked out the, the windshield and I was like row four or whatever, it was a big long van. And I see his headlights flashing and he's honking, 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 honking and all of a sudden, whack. And this driver hit us on the left front and slid down the side of the van, hitting the wheel and then skipping off and kind of we then backed up and this is what his car looked like. It's hard to see, but the left front tires completely snapped off. If it wouldn't have been snapped off, I'm pretty sure he'd have just drove away. Um, had to get out the other side of the car, belligerently drunk, immediately goes for money to pay off our driver. Our driver said no and did everything right, but it was just, it was, yeah, God was definitely protecting us there because if it would have been any, he, our driver got off as far as he could and if that car would have, he just came across the middle lane. But if he'd have got any closer or pushed us off, it would have been a lot worse than what it was. We were all fine. Worst damage to the van was there was a broken hubcap. So it wasn't too bad. The, <laughs> there, there's so much going on in this picture that I could talk about. Um, we wanted to get a haircut they do the straight razor down there, so it flips out and has the you know, real long straight razor. You can see Derek looks a lot different now than what he looks in that picture. Pretty much tells him, take it all off, shave it down. So he straight razored everything. The guy in the blue, um, his name is Ralphie, affectionately known as the drunk barber to us. <laughs> Literally, as soon as he was done cutting Derek's hair, he went right back to the bottle. We did not know that that was <laughs> what was going on. <laughs> um, the guy behind us is Rich. He's been there for 30 years or so. Um, he was kind of the guy that was guiding us on working on the house. Um, he's there at the mission at uh, 26 or 27. He'd been saved for about six months, went down there for a mission trip, and just never came home. Um, so pretty incredible story. We heard his story Friday. Um, yeah, if you think about it, pray for Rich. Don't need to know a lot of details, but just pray for Rich. Um, keep in your, in your prayers. But he told us as we we're getting ready to go to the haircut place, he said, there's four barbers there. Don't go to Ralphie. Okay, sounds easy enough. Derek sits down in that chair because it was the only open chair. Guy puts the, <laughs> the blanket on him, starts going down. And Rich looks over, he goes, I said don't go to Ralphie. Like, we, we, we didn't know who Ralphie was. 
And he said, well, you'll be fine. And then we, yeah, that, that's the drunk barber. Um, and then the guy, it's hard to see, and I didn't get any pictures of me getting a haircut, but the guy in the red with his arm kind of on his side there um, kind of really changed my life in a way um, by just giving me a haircut. And it was the most mind-blowing experience that I... Pro <sighs> There's very few above it if there is any. Um, straight razor in my face and then just gave me a fade and trimmed on the top. I have a lot of friends that are barbers, hairstylists, gotten a lot of haircuts by friends. And the care that he showed and the intentionality that he showed with just, I couldn't even speak his language. He knew zero English. And I knew zero Spanish. Well, it was very little Spanish. But it still was portrayed how much he cared about me as a person just giving me a haircut. That haircut probably would have been 35, 40 bucks here. I think it was eight bucks, seven bucks, something like that. And it just, we were doing the debriefing and the lady that was there at the mission, this is afterwards, the lady at the mission was asking us what was the most impactful thing. And I really didn't even know how to put it in words and so I just started talking, but I said that that just changed me. Like, he couldn't even speak my language. He, had, he didn't know me from Adam. We were just white guys walking in off the street. This guy does this for work every day. And then he does this, that's just what he does. And it made me wonder how many times do we pass people on the street or how many even friends do we have that it's just that, hey, how you doing? Good. And you just keep on moving. Just kind of what Derek said. Like, we never, it doesn't seem like we ever really slow down and make it intentional about it, witnessing or just genuinely caring about who they were. Um, yeah, it, it made me look at myself and what I do day to day completely different, just based on an $8 haircut. I mean, massaging, yeah, this like this massager that went over his hand, massage your head, your shoulders, your back. And then when I tried to tip him, he looked at me like I was crazy. Like, it was an $8 haircut, and I think I tipped him like two bucks in, in our money, and it just blew his mind. Um, and a hard, uh, very few Dominicans get married. I saw he had a ring on his finger, which means, down there, that means they're typically a little more settled down. Good guy. Um, he got done with me about 5.30 or so. Another dude sat in his chair, and I saw this guy hustling out, the guy in the red that cut my hair, hustling out, gets on his dirt bike scooter, and drives down the road. Now, that was weird, because there's a guy in his chair I know it's late, but about 10 minutes later, we see him flying back this way with a little girl on the back of the scooter so, and with a backpack on. So what we assume happened is he cut my hair, went and picked his daughter up from school, took his daughter home, and then was coming back to cut this next guy's hair at 5, 30, 6 o'clock at night. So just, yeah, and he still cared and took his time. Like, it was a 45-minute haircut on me. Um, really blew my mind there. Um, you can go to the next one. This is just a cup of coffee um, that we got at Tostadas. Um, their burgers down there were phenomenal. Um, just took a picture of this because it was really, I know they do that up here, but I don't go to those coffee places, so it was kind of cool seeing that. Uh, you can go to the next one. So I guess if you do laundry, that this is just how you do laundry. Um, they will carry anything on a scooter. We've seen, I think it was three people or four people was the most that we've seen on a scooter, four. So then when we were driving, I asked the lady that was in charge of the mission, I said, what's the most? And she said, six. And they are not big like big motorcycles. They are tiny like that. This lady, if it's hard to see, has a full laundry basket of clothes sitting on her left knee, and then she's the second passenger on this dirt bike. It was another one that I saw carrying it. It was hard to see because it had already left, but it was either a sheet of drywall or a sheet of plywood. He was the second passenger. There was somebody driving it. This drywall was probably six foot high and he was holding it like this and just pushing it against the driver of the dirt bike but it was way above his head and way too wide to see so he's just sitting there holding this and they're just flying through the it's insane it's insane you can go to the next one this is uh i took a picture of this to remember how just incredible the stuff is down there it's so easy to just go through but this is a little uh smoothie place maddie you'll remember this one this is the one we went to with fight. Yeah. It's 110 pesos, which is about two bucks. There, behind that counter there, there's fresh fruit, everything from mangoes, strawberries, blueberries, bananas, pineapples, all fresh. And it's a big 24 ounce glass for like two bucks. And it is absolutely delicious. I got one in the airport coming back four times as much and about a quarter as tasty as what this was. So it's just mind blowing. 
Uh, if you're ever going on a mission trip, ask them to go to the smoothie place. This stuff's pretty good. This one's hard to see. I don't know. Can you zoom in any on the bottom right there? Can you pull that uh, slide over from where it says minus to plus at all? Perfect. This is the chapel at the mission that we stayed. Um, it was absolutely beautiful to go to church there. It was obviously you saw the weather, so it's 85, 70, 75, 80 degrees there. Windows were open, doors were open, birds were chirping, breeze was blowing through. It just you felt like you were just part of God's nature. Um, doesn't make it any better to worship, but it just makes you feel like you're just part of that. Um, really a moving experience. And you saw there was I don't know what is there twenty kids, fifteen kids there, something like that. And you could see the different kind of progression as they go because the kids are all there they're from the states and they get sent there to kind of get them right i guess um they have some trouble here they send them down there to kind of pretty much just cut off of everything from up here and so that's what this mission is for to kind of uh, minister to them they go to school there and they got to go through these levels i think a level six you can then graduate and come home um, the guys that we were talking to probably like an average of what, a year and a half two years from coming to going um, and so when we were at the chapel, you could see the progression of these boys and girls. It was like eight and eight or whatever it was on either side. And you have like half the girls standing up for worship time and half the girls there looked like they'd rather be asleep. Just sitting down, not singing, not whatever. And you could visibly see the, the, how they can progress. So it's, it's good to see the work they're doing there. I took this picture. It's a little grainy, um, but it's a beautiful setting there. They got the church up on the hill and the houses are down here and you'd walk up to that. Uh, you can go to the next one. This is where we stayed. This is what they call the Goshen House. Uh, the group that we were with had been going down for 28 years or so. They built the bottom floor, lived in that, and then added the top floor on um, later. So this is where we stayed and slept. You can go to the next one. This is the back side of it, kind of. This is the front side of it. Um, you can see the hammocks on either side. We slept, me and Derek slept inside um, the bedroom. They have a bunch of bunks there, two big bedrooms. You could house, I don't know, 30 people probably. After the first night there, we sweated. I sweated so much inside. Like, Man, it's hot in here. And so Derek was like, well, let's just sleep on the hammocks. So for the rest of the time that we were there, Derek slept on the left one and I slept on the right one. And this, where I'm taking the picture from, is kind of the highest point of that yard and it kind of all falls away. You can see the town that was there and you just, it was beautiful rain would come down but the roof was sticking over so it was very peaceful to sleep there a lot of um meditating and praying there in that hammock uh, you can go to the next one this is the view looking in from the house kind of looking to the outside so you can kind of see there's a big island here there'd be a big bedroom off to your left and then a big bedroom off to your right so this is kind of looking out of that door um, you can see the hammocks there we spent a lot of time here in the mornings and then in the evenings as well and also in the afternoon, uh, they get a good about an hour siesta there after lunch. Uh, Got to do the Dominican thing. So um, very cool place. The, there's always a breeze there. It's 80 degrees, but because you're on a mountain, Rich explained to us the air's either going up or down. And so even if it's hot, the air's moving, and it's very, very comfortable. Um, another picture of the, of the porch there. And there's just an example of uh, hanging out in the evening, Dean and me and Derek talking there. Um, I'm sure Dean's doing something crazy, so. Yes, yes, Dean eating chocolate. This picture, I'm going to let you talk to Derek about this picture, but the last night there, something drastically happened at about midnight at night. <laughs> so we'll, we'll just let you talk to Derek after church about that one. Um, and then you can go to the next one. This is the last picture in the slide. Um, it's hard to describe in words how that feels. So we left Miami to go to Dominican Republic when we were going down. Coming back, we left uh, Dominican Republic and we flew all the way up to New Jersey. On the way up, Jeff had a, uh, a window seat and he said he prefers the aisle seat and I had an aisle seat. So we just switched seats and he said, hey, on the way up, when we get close, keep an eye out because you can see the Statue of Liberty. Oh, well, that's pretty cool. Kind of forgot about it. We're flying. It's a four hour flight from Dominican up to here. And we're getting ready to touch down, getting low, and all of a sudden I was like, oh yeah. I could see the skyline of New York, and then there was the Statue of Liberty. And it just, I don't know. I, I think we forget how just blessed we are to live in this country. Not that there's anything wrong with the Dominican Republic, but to you come here, people, yeah, they drive right. They, there's a lot of things that Dominicans do better than us, but there's also how blessed we are and we, how free we are here. 
Um, and I think we forget that so easy. And that picture just kind of symbolizes that for me as I was flying in, seeing that, and just that emotional, just U.S. soil. We're home. So thank you. And yeah. That's all I have. Thank you, guys. Just a couple additions to that. You're right. We are blessed. You know, when I go down there, and I think I can become self-absorbed about what's going on in my life, but we're millionaires, really, compared. Uh, the average income, Derek? $300 a month. I don't know if we could live on that in a week. Uh, that's, that's $75 a week for them. Yeah, um, a lot of poverty. We, we should have. We should have went to the one place, she said, because Harbacoa actually is the resort community where all the Dominicans go because it's not hot. Anywhere else on the island, you're going to roast and be stinky. And, uh, but uh, they, have it, they have it pretty rough. Uh, and so it reminds me of just how much we have. Um, you know, they did a nice job of not uh, embarrassing me. Um, the drunk barber shaved my legs. I can't even tell you how that happened. Um, I literally was just sitting next to the guy, itching the noceum bites on my, uh, digging at the noceum bites on my leg, and then he sprayed something on my legs. And I have, I always joke that I have these little knee beards, because it's dark right there. You could put a little face on my knee, and it looks like it's a little beard. He shaved that right off. <laughs> and then I had one knee beard and a clean shaved leg on the other side. And so what do you do? Um, but the, the, the camaraderie between Dean and these two was off the charts. I, I know he didn't show it, but one night Dean went to the trouble of going upstairs while he was asleep in his hammock. And he put like this flexible hose... <laughs> On a, on a rope, and he lowered it down. <laughs> and what happened, Derek? <laughs> we got to do a lot of ministry, but I, I haven't laughed that hard. It, my, I, we laugh so hard some nights my ribs hurt. It was just a, it was a good time. But uh, anyways, uh, next year there'll be another opportunity and pray that more of you can go and, and have that experience. So let's, uh, let's wrap it up, ladies. Please stand, and we're going to sing Amazing Grace, My Chains Are Gone. <clears throat> Thank you. 
you for letting us indulge you this morning with our adventure. And uh, one thing I just want to share with you, when, when you go and you serve others and you think that you're helping others, you are. But the truth is, oftentimes God is actually doing something in you. And that's my favorite part of, of being on the mission field. And I can't realistically go every year. And I have been spoiled and I, I, I have gotten to. But I think everybody should, every couple or every three years, they should, they should get out and they should, should be stretched and get to experience that because that, in fact, is what will happen. God will reach down into that soil and he'll do something special. And what grows is going to blow your mind and it comes back and it impacts your family and your friends and your community and our church. And that's what we want. I'm going to let my brother close us out in prayer. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for another beautiful day you've given to us. Thank you for the opportunity to meet with friends of like mind in your house and worship you. Thank you for the opportunity that we had uh, to go serve you. Um, thank you for the safety that you granted us coming home. Be with the others that are down there and give them safety as they come home as well. Be, be with us as we go from here. Uh, give us all a good week and help us. Uh, give you the honor and the glory that is deserved. In your name, amen.